Tonight on People of the South, we present Chimurenga Man, starring the president of Zimbabwe, Robert Mugabe. Chimurenga is a Shona word which means to fight or struggle. It has its origins in the 1896 first Chimurenga, as Africans fought to prevent white, mainly British settlers, from invading and occupying their land. It is a word that for Zimbabweans evokes intense emotion and forms a vital part of the story of the people of Zimbabwe and the life story of Robert Gabriel Mugabe. In 1924, almost 30 years after the end of the first Chimarenga War, Robert Mugabe is born in a Christian village run by Jesuit priests to Gabriel and Bona Mugabe. Brought up largely by his mother and maternal grandparents, Robert Mugabe is a shy, bookish young boy known to play tennis and indulge in boxing, but forever seeking refuge in a book. Growing up on tales of resistance and war and the loss of his grandfather's land, it was at the University of Fort Hare that Robert Mugabe's political eyes were opened and his consciousness awakened as he comes into contact with key South African activists such as Z.K. Matthews, Duma Nokwe, and others who are reeling from the recent introduction of apartheid in South Africa. Upon his return home, Mugabe and his colleagues form ZANU in 1963. Mugabe and ZANU launch an intensive guerrilla campaign. With Ian Smith's minority regime under increasing pressure, in 1979, the British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher convenes the Lancaster House Conference, which leads to a negotiated solution, a new constitution, as well as a ceasing of hostilities between warring parties and the ultimate independence of the free nation of Zimbabwe, with Robert Mugabe as its first prime minister. A liberation legend and the victor of the second Chimurenga, Robert Mugabe is a mild-mannered intellectual who today at 89 has led his people for over 32 years, years that have earned him adulation and acrimony from different sources. He and his life story form part of African legend and African liberation history. In Robert Mugabe's view, his mission in life is to deliver a free and liberated Zimbabwe to achieve political and economic sovereignty. His journey will not be complete. His purpose in life will remain unfulfilled until the land and economy of Zimbabwe are firmly in the hands of his people. Robert Mugabe is to many the archetypal son of the soil, a strong man, an African gentleman, a controversial man, but above all else, a Chimurenga man. What type of young man, young boy, do you remember being? Uh, folklore says you were very studious, very disciplined, something of a loner, actually. Perhaps reserved, not quite a loner. I mixed with other boys. I played tennis ball with others, you know, so on. Went to school with other boys, and so not, not quite a loner. But I, I could live alone with one or two books of mine. I loved it. <laughs> books, and he used to put the pussy tendo. Always a I'll book tucked under your arm. Mm. Yes. To the point whereby even when you were cattle herding, you would often have a whip in one hand and a book in the other. A little book, yes, 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 yes. Memorize, memorize a poem or something. Yes, yes, yes. I, I like, I yeah. like doing that. Yeah. Were, were you politically conscious? At not? that time, yes, yes. Just an awareness that uh, the white man had come and uh, robbed us of that which was ours, our land. And that's why we now were in areas called native reserves. And there there were the, you know, large tracts of land on the other side of the river, big farms belonging to Venta. Those were the, some of the names, I see. Of yes. the poor names uh, next to us. We knew these, uh, these were once upon a time uh, our grandparents, you know, lands.
In 1950, Mugabe is 26 when he goes to Fort Hare, a black university in South Africa famous for creating an African intellectual vanguard. You were at the time at Fort Hare, a very good looking young man, um, obviously attractive to ladies. Did you do what all young men do at that time? I understand there was a nurses institute very close by. Well, yeah, we, used to, we were just doing dances. We joined the dancing groups. And, were you a good uh, dancer? And, yeah, yeah, well, yes, just joining in the, in the club. And I remember Dumanoke was one of the, he wanted the trombone. Oh, really? Trombone. <laughs> he played the trombone of Duma. Wow. Yeah. And, 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 and yes, they were, they were the, uh, in the band. And of course, you, you joined the group. We didn't have many girls uh, in the girls' hostel. Uh, just uh, just a few. And so for our dances, we invited girls from across the river, the Chumi, mm. uh, from Lovedale. Oh, I see. Love. Yes. And they loved, they loved they had lots of girls, of course, the, in training, nurses in training, and uh, we, we called them the blue bottles. Really? Why but, was that? Because they were they wore blue. Oh, the, okay. Their uniform was <laughs> blue. See. And we, we call it the blue bottles. Yeah. And they are, come and then we dance with them. Yeah. We did the, the classical dancing. A quick step, waltz, yes. and those who did rumba. It, it was usually the, 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 so the, the were, Capetonians yeah. from uh, the, the colors from the Cape. They, they danced better. So in a sense, Fort Hare was turning um, you all into uh, Young African gentlemen, yeah, that with with intellect. Well, but we intellect, but uh, we, we wanted to be Africanist. We we with that, and we we said no, we must fight. Trained as a teacher and radicalized by life and learning, Mugabe visits Ghana to see for himself what an independent African country looks like. There, he meets Sally Heffron who would later become his wife and the first lady of an independent Zimbabwe. What caught your eye about her? What, did, what attracted you to her, do you think? What about her made you feel? No, we, we just became friends. Then uh, I got to know the background. Good parentage and had been brought up well. She was a teacher and uh, Intelligent and intelligent was that important to you? That then? was very important. That yeah, was, and I thought she could make a good wife. Well, I did only two years in Ghana, and uh, when I came back on leave, I found that back home here, a, a new party had been formed to succeed the, the African National. Congress, which had been banned in 1959, and this was the National Democratic Party. And of course, there was a young man from Ghana uh, who was political, um, who uh, or, or could talk about an African country. And so I, I, I joined colleagues here, young, young people, relatives, the likes of Chikerema, we had grown up together, and, and uh, we went round. I talking about what it is like in Ghana, and uh, the life of, of people, what uh, independence has done to uh, the young people in Ghana. And uh, then the National Democratic Party decided uh, to have his Congress. And the Congress decided uh, that I should be made information and publicity secretary of the party. Then I wrote to Sally to say, well, the little car I had bought, just 500 uh, pounds, <laughs> an Opel record as oh, really? sky blue. Right. <laughs> <laughs> a good little car then. Yes. Yeah. Just two door. Yes. Uh, can you ship it and come, we get married here. 
So you decided, I need Sally in my life? Yes, I, th I made that decision. The liberation legend's new wife, Sally Mugabe, was greatly loved by almost all Zimbabweans, but by none more so than her own husband. Supporting him in jail and in struggle, she becomes a force in her own right and a champion of women and the poor. To a young Robert Mugabe, she is his rock and life partner until her untimely death in 1992. Mugabe spends 11 years in prison studying law and economics and plotting out the liberation struggle they would join upon their release in 1975. As you emerge from prison, what is in your mind? What is your determination as you come out of prison? Well, well when you're in prison, you say, OK, when we get out these bastards, we're going to deal with them. And that that's what you set about doing. That's what we said, yes. That, 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 yes, of course, they, they, they are doing this to us and to our people. And, uh, of course, there were hangings taking place in prison uh, of uh, political prisoners. If those would be found guilty of murder or something like that, if, you know, having had explosives or something. That real hurt us. And we said, well, some people are going to pay for this when we get out. Upon his release, Mugabe joins the liberation struggle. And after almost 15 years of combat, all warring parties head to London for the Lancaster House talks in 1979. The land issue is a major stumbling block in the negotiations, and Mugabe signs only after the British and American governments agree to provide the funds to buy the land from white farmers on a willing buyer, willing seller basis. Lancaster House. Yes. It was on the issue of compensation, whether they would compensate all, all, the, all the farmers. They said they didn't have that much money we would have to uh, do something ourselves. We said, no, we wouldn't pay. We couldn't tax our people, our poor people, uh, in order to get, get them the land which was taken from them without any payment having been made. You were satisfied with their promises? And the, the issue of, of reconciliation. But as the negotiations ended, you felt we struck an honorable yeah, well, deal. But, but with Mrs. Thatcher, yeah. she, 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 you could trust her. Yeah, you could definitely trust her. Yes. But, uh, but of course, what happened later uh, was a different story with the Labour Party and the, the Blair and Company. Those you could never trust. Really? You, you couldn't yes. compare them to, to Thatcher and, and, and the others. You were very reconciliatory when you um, uh, came into power as prime minister and yes. gave speeches uh, saying that we're all brothers, white and black, we must unite and so Yes, we say it so even here. If you could go back in time, what would you do differently in terms of the Lancaster House Accords, was it a precursor to um, land reform or land invasions? Was it the cause, if you like, that, that deal um, and the frustrations that came with it later? Well, uh, would you do anything differently if no, you could go back? No, it, it, except that uh, one would uh, would, would, would never trust the British system, absolutely. Why is that, Mr. President? Because of, of the change of policy. If we had been dealing with uh, the, the Conservatives, we would never have had to grab the land at the end of the day because something different had happened in Britain. 
And how did things change? Uh, Labour, uh, the Conservatives were defeated at the election that that took place, and uh, Labour won that election. In came Mr. Blair. I met him, uh, and he said, "Oh no, leave this matter to me. Uh, I have it." So more than a year went by, and the two years went by. Then we, we got a letter from a lady. What's her name now? Claire, Claire Short, Short yes. to say, uh, no, your, the, the land question does not fall within the precincts of their policy of poverty alleviation. They were that dismissive. And the other people were angry. They would say, there is Britain now, you see, refusing to uphold his own side of, you know, obligations. And who are we to continue to trust it? So the war veterans started. You will trust. take the land. And I said, yes, they won't be arrested. But uh, what we'll <coughs> not do is to recognize that they, well, their act is a legal act. No, they are demonstrating. But we will look at the land which they have seized and see whether it is land we can uh, and then acquire properly, legally, uh, under the law, and so this you is what it we to did. be done in a in an ordered, in an ordered fashion. Yes. fashion. Al although yes. all the war veterans, you know, were that rough, right. but actually we, we we followed that up with 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 an an orderly mechanism of acquiring the land in a proper way, because it suddenly went from five in a day to land grabs all, all over all, the country, all, 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 everywhere. And yes, and, and it was each man and himself and God for us all. And it, 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 yes, seizures everywhere. And it, it was, Could you have controlled that? Because the West, in a way, blamed you, didn't they, as yeah, yeah, the but instigator? They, but they never blamed Blair. Do you notice uh, the whole way through, there is not a single criticism of the fact that Blair, you know, uh, became irresponsible refused to, to, to take up, you see, the, uh, the, 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 to assume the obligation which Britain should have properly assumed. But uh, well, of course, we are Africans, and of course you get uh, the, 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 that, that uh, uh, criticism in the press. Uh, Mugabe is doing, Mugabe is doing that. After all, this is our land, you see? We did not need to negotiate taking it back, you see. But here we are, we are negotiating with the British, and there is a Britain now who is re refusing to, to abide by uh, the agreement at Lancaster. Uh -huh. And what we expected, what Blair wanted was that uh, we, we, should, we should now, uh, you know, as it were, reverse ourselves. And I suppose he no longer wanted the land acquisition program to, to continue. To improve the lot of our people, let no one interfere with our processes. Let no one who is negative want to spoil what we are doing for ourselves in order to unite Africa. We belong to this continent. We don't mind having and bearing sanctions banning us from Europe. We are not Europeans. We have not asked for any inch of Europe, or any square inch of that territory. So, Blair, keep your England and let me keep my Zimbabwe. And yes, sure, they should have been orderly. But at the end of the day, they are taking that which is ours and giving it back to us. And this is what mattered. And the, the, the rest of the world could say anything about us. But no, 
this they must look at this as having been the product of the stance and position taken by the Blair regime. You weren't worried about the economic consequences? The consequences, would... those would come and go. Those would come and go, but the land having been acquired now would actually ensure that we, we recover. What would your advice be to South Africa about how to handle its land reform issues? I Sell would out. say handle it your own way, the best way possible. But um, you tried uh, William Buyer, William Seller here. <laughs> we did. We went for 10 years. That was entrenched for 10 years in the Constitution, by the way. We had to go that way for 10 years. And we obeyed it, you see. And that's what people don't, 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 don't look at. Our people complied with the Constitution for a good 10 years. Willing buyer, willing seller. Why didn't that work? It didn't work because you could not get the land if the farmer said no. And what you needed was land which was, you know, big enough, large enough yes. in extent to enable you to settle people. If you got a yes here, followed by a no, and a no, that piece of land here becomes useless to you. You couldn't settle people. You had to get yes, yes, yes. And then you could put two farms, three farms together that then would constitute large land to enable you to settle, you know, a large community. Because some people say that part of the reason why the West went at you so hard was to dissuade the ANC and others that don't go there. Yeah, go on, go, don't go Leave this the land. But, but in South Africa, it, 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 would, it wouldn't work. But also, South Africa has a population which is very urbanized. Yes. And very few would want to go back from, from the urban areas to the, to the soil and dirty themselves with the mud and all. You know, farming, uh, it's hard, 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 hard. hard. You, you need to have brought up doing farming. And the majority of us, of course, are not urban people. If one was born here in town, one would not take to land that sure, easily. Sure. So I don't, I don't see many of your people in Soweto wanting to <laughs> get back to land. No, sure. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there, of course, you, you still had land, uh, hungry people. Your see? status um, prior to that was the same as Nelson Mandela's in that the whole world was praising you and lauding you. And then you came under a sort of sustained yeah, attack. Yes, of course, because yes. of the land. You see? Yes. Because of the land. They will praise you only if you are doing things that please them. You don't, you don't. Mandela has, has gone a bit too far in, uh, in, uh, uh, doing good to, to, to the non-black communities in, at, in the, really, in some cases, at the expense of them. Look at the, uh, the system, you see? That's been too saintly, it's been too good, too much of a saint. Would you, in the place of the ANC, be more radical in terms of economic transformation? As things are, if at the negotiations, yes. And perhaps things would have been different if uh, your dad had been alive. I think they would be maybe a little tougher. I mean, leaving things as they are. Oh. That, uh, that, uh, that gave too much away. But it made for greater peace.
greater reco reconciliation, yes. yes. We would, we, we, we also accept the policy. Well, uh, let me repeat what I said after Lancaster House. I was surprised when in my discussions with Mugabe people and the Nkomo people, how pragmatic they were and how different they seemed to be to the Marxist image that had been built up around them. I must in all fairness say that. We, we, we forgave Ian Smith, you know, after those thousands who died, the bombs. And, but at the end of the day, we say, well, these are bygones, and why should we look back? Let's look ahead and turn our swords. That's my speech, the speech I made in March 1980. Turn our swords into plowshares and become friends. I urge you, whether you are black or white, to join me in a new pledge to forget our grim past. Forgive others and forget. Join hands in a new amity and together as Zimbabweans, trample upon racialism, tribalism and regionalism and work hard to reconstruct and rehabilitate our society as we reinvigorate our economic machinery. Surely, this is now time to beat our swords into plowshares so we can attend to the problems of developing our economy and our society. Long live our freedom. President, um, one day you walk into one of your offices and you see a beautiful young lady. Um, her name is Grace. What catches your eye about her? What ma made you attracted to her? Uh, well, it's, it was not uh, just the fact that um, one was attracted. After Sally was gone, yes. Well, it was necessary for, for me to look for someone. And uh, even, even as Sally was too, you know, going through the last few days, Although it, 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 it uh, might have appeared to some as cruel, I say to myself, well, it's not just myself needing children. My mother all the time said, ah, am I going to die without seeing? Grandchildren. Grandchildren. Your vaccine. So I decided to make love to her. Uh, she happened to be where one, one of the nearest. I don't move very much. And uh, she was a, a divorcee herself. And uh, so it was. And uh, we, we got we got our first child when my mother was still alive. Some say that you, you actually explained to your um, to Sally that look this is happening, and she accepted it. Well, uh, yeah, she 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 she's not she. I, I did tell her. <clears throat> and she. Well, she she just kept quiet and said. Fine, but she, she did ask, but do you still love me? I said, yes. Then she said, ah, fine. As you were being attacked by the Western press, um, she came under attack as well. Uh, some say in a way to get at you, but you're thick-skinned. Um, did you, 
worry about her, feel for her when um, she started getting newspaper attacks? She's a shopaholic. Oh, and, uh, yeah, shopaholic. Kind of... <laughs> I don't know why they say she does. She, she, she actually doesn't doesn't uh, do that kind of shopping of dresses and so on. She she will buy fabrics and have have them sewn by some. He, she make she designs them herself. You see, and uh, you can see they are quite decorated. She wants them very colourful. Mm. Does she dress you, or do you have your own style of dressing? Yes. Ah, no, 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 no. I dress myself. I, sometimes she says, I, "I like this." I say, "No, you don't know anything about men's dresses. Please." <laughs> Need me to do my own, she says. <laughs> Doesn't like that. Yes, yes. <laughs> she would like to dress, to dress me, but no, I, I am an independent man. I, I, I make my own choices, but she does buy me. <laughs> it's, it's from time to time gifts. Has it been a happy marriage? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Happy marriage, but uh, a young woman with her uh, own mind. She wants to do things this way, fine. The age gap doesn't bother you at all? No, it doesn't. It doesn't bother us. I think she appreciates it. And uh, she keeps herself as, as busy as possible. But fortunately, uh, I have not had much to worry about, yes. except cataracts here in my eyes. When there's criticism and things like this, um, is it water off a, a duck's back to you after all these years in politics, or does it sting? Does it hurt a bit? Um, no, no, but, well, these certain things now just mm. bump, as it were, bump off, and you see, just dismiss it and say, well, the usual thing. I mean, if, 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 if people say, you, you are a dictator, they've said so yesterday, they said, they say so, you know, they are saying this uh, merely to uh, to tarnish you and uh, diminish and demean your status. Then, then you don't pay much attention to it, you know, it's, it's, it's their politics. And most of it has been wasted, you see. British papers, British press, Labour inspired. Mm. Do you think the it was conservatives, a the conservatives are greater friends of Jesse Magic? Really? As we fought the struggle, it was the Labour Party which was uh, a friend of ours. But uh, after independence, you find it's the conservatives who behave much better. And so. they, they are, they, 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 you, you can deal with them, they, they tell the truth. You, you know. Their word means quite a lot. Where, whereas with Labour, oh, I mean, well, who can ever believe what what Mr. Blair says? Here we told we called him Blair. There were 4,000 white farmers in Zimbabwe at the time of the land invasions in 2000. They have since been replaced by almost 200,000 black commercial farmers. The white farmers who violently took over the farms in the 1950s and 60s, displacing 100,000 black families from their land, were inexperienced in farming. The Rhodesian government of the time had to support them, providing training, giving them low interest loans for equipment and seed. It took the farmers about 20 years to become commercially successful. According to a recent report, in the 10 years since the farm invasions and despite the drought and disinvestment, the resettled farmers are reaching the production levels of the white farmers they replaced. In short, with another decade of growth still ahead of them, Zimbabwe may in time be regarded as one of the few successful land reform programs in post-colonial history and Robert Mugabe may go on to be regarded by future generations as a visionary. The possibility of elections. Can I ask you two things on that? One, will you stand? 
Yes, I'm standing. No, I'm standing definitely. You don't feel, Mr. President, look, I've done my bit. I don't want the pressures. You don't feel that. I do feel that. I, I do. But I also feel there is a fight to fight. Still. The British are calling for regime change. That I must go. That call must not come from the British. My people, I will listen to. And the, the sanctions are still on us. And what man is there who, when his own house is being attacked, will run away from the house and leave the family and the children being still under attack? It's a coward of men. We get rid of that, ensure that the sanctions are defeated. If they remain there, when our economy has recovered nevertheless, and we are in full control, ownership of resources has consolidated itself fine. I can say then goodbye. But uh, my people still need me. And when, when people still need you to lead them, it's not time, sir. Doesn't matter how old you are to say goodbye. They will say, ah, you're deserting us. And I am not a deserter, never have been, never have thought of deserting people. We fight to the finish. Hmm? That's it. I still have it in here. You can, you can still throw a good punch. It's, it's Mandela. <laughs> Will the next elections be peaceful, do you think? Yeah, I think so. That's the one thing we are talking about. Mm -hmm. That only now. Yes. What, what real need for fighting is there? This is our country together. And we will be together. We no lose we will still be there as a family together. And tomorrow and tomorrow, we'll produce more elections to be won, to be lost. And let's teach our people that these elections are not boxing matches. There are elections to choose leaders, leaders for you in parliament or in other fora. So it's that, that, that culture not to accept contests, you know, to accept opposition, that, that uh, we, we, we don't have uh, uh, in every way, but it's, it's the majority of people seem to accept it. But you still have these little fights. They're bound to take place. Do you think, given all these years, as the liberation movement, as the government, that ZANU-PF would accept defeat at elections if it came? Yes, yes, of course. Why not? They, 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 we, we, were, we, we lost lots of seats in 2008, and I lost quite many seats. I got 43%. I, I know the reason, but we, we, we have been correcting all this. And Gueru has also uh, uh, meant to, to ensure that uh, our scenes of omission and commission in 2008 are left behind. Can I ask you, reflecting on it, as I'm sure you do from time to time, what were the big disappointments? What were the things that you've regretted most? I mean, if about, I ab about the, your years in office and things that took place with them. If I could ask you, for example, that saga in Matabili land. Yeah. Were you pained by the way it turned out and the loss of life and uh, 
uh, things that well, two yes, we, we comrade organizations went head to head against each other? Yeah, it, it was very bad. Uh, well, we don't want to talk about that. Mm. But uh, it, 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 is, it is a story which, which, we, which has not been told in full. Why do you write it, how, how it started and so on. And you know what was happening. Uh, it's, it's involving, it's not a story that we should, we should continue. But of course, the, 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 when wars do okay, it doesn't matter the forms of the war. It hurts. What happens on the ground? The soldiers, well, you you know what 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 soldiers do on the ground. The army, even where they are under instructions, but there is always the personal element. Yeah, and sometimes they go out of their way. You see, to hurt and uh, to commit acts which are outrageous, it happens, and you 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 get it happening. So those things happen, but but also the elements on the guerrilla side committed atrocious, atrocious, atrocious things, cutting people's noses and ears, that was happening. But of course, people want merely to, do, to, to, to emphasize the, the, the side of uh, what they are alleged to be the acts of the soldiers, but uh, are silent completely on what the guerrillas yes, were yes, doing yeah. on their own, because they wanted the people to uh, to, to, to follow the men to uh, not to give any assistance to, to the soldiers. Speak what would up. you like to be remembered foremost? What would you like the legacy of Robert Mugabe to be in the minds of his own people? Of his own people that uh, he... There was once a man called Robert Mugabe who... in the interest of the, his own people, for the struggle to liberate them. And I uh, had ideas, ownership of the resources by his own people. And the fact that the people should be united to remain revolutionary, guard against colonial and imperial powers that seek to undermine the authority of governments and wanted to desired right up to the end that his own people should be masters of their own destiny. And that is all. I don't desire to be known as anything greater than that. And I think that is very great if uh, I was given that recognition, purely that. And that's what a rec recognition I think all nationalists, would, leaders would want. The issue of uh, having been a great man, of going to the books, uh, I just remain a simple man. One of my own, part of my society, and that is all. Good. Thank you, Mr. President. Right on. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I, yeah. very, I hope I didn't take yeah. up too much time of your day. Yeah, well, um, it has but, been a lot of, <laughs> lot of time, but, yes. uh, but uh, <laughs> since we have not been together... That's we're... it.
that's it for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Join us next week when I interview First Lady Grace Mugabe and have lunch with the Mugabe family. Till then, may your gods be with you. Good night.